Hey everyone, uh, today I just wanted to show off my Tesla OEM subwoofer install in my 2021 SR Plus, and that's the one with LFP battery. Uh, firstly, a huge thanks to Tony Holdgate, uh, who has an excellent blog detailing this process. Uh, his car is a 2020, whereas this one's a 2021, so there are a couple of small differences that I'll, uh, I'll mention. Uh, I've added a link to his blog in the description and you should definitely check that out. Uh, I chose the uh, OEM Tesla sub because uh, I didn't want to mess around with fitting something aftermarket. Uh, I know it's not going to be the best sounding or the best value for money, uh, but I, th I like that it's as, as stock as can be. Uh, buying the sub was really easy. Uh, I just logged a service request in the Tesla app uh, and said that I wanted to buy it and would be installing it myself. They charged me 382 Australian dollars and it took about a, a week to ship to my house. Uh, for the subwoofer signal, there are no uh, RCA outputs on in the in the Model 3, um, so I've had to tap into the front door woofer. That's the one down there. Um, I actually already have the Handshow DIY kit installed, uh, and that's the, the kit that uh, enables uh, that speaker there and that one there. Um, so the colors uh, for tapping down here uh, are a little different in the 2021 version. This took me a little while to, to find out and to verify. Uh, you're looking for brown and gray. Um, sorry, it's really hard to film. Um, brown and gray, and they're also in a different position on the connector compared to the 2020 versions. That stumped me for a little bit when I was trying to verify the connections. Um, the, the wires are at the bottom far side of the connector when it's plugged in, if that helps. Um, as with Tony, I used Scotch Lock, uh, Scotch Lock wire taps, and I actually attached them to my uh, DIY hand show kit so that I didn't have to touch, touch the stock wiring. So you can see that there, that's the brown on the left and the gray on the right, I think. Sorry, it's a little hard to see. Uh, and once I'd done that, I just, uh, around the speaker wire, oh, focus. Around the speaker wire, all the way down into the boot. Uh, I'll go into the rear door next. Uh, so underneath the back seat, uh, there's uh, an area called the penthouse, and that has uh, a 12 volt socket. Or well, not socket. Uh, a 12 volt bolt that you can connect to underneath this tab here. So I've just uh, put a ring terminal on top and, um, and put a bolt on top, uh, a nut on top. Something I did do a little differently to Tony was I added an inline fuse. Um, where is it? Just there. Uh, that's a 20 amp fuse, but it probably doesn't really matter as long as it's more than 15 amps. The, uh, the amplifier has a 15 amp um, fuse inbuilt. So I ran that 12 volt uh, back into the boot along with the speaker wire from the front. Here's where the magic happens. Uh, so behind this uh, right hand side boot wall, um, there's an insert uh, where the sub would normally go, and that's it on the floor just there. Um, you can just remove this and throw it out. Um, I tried getting it out with a spanner, and that was a real pain in the ass. It took about, I don't know, way longer than I, I should have taken, so a socket set is the way to go there. Um, getting the subwoofer in there can be a little bit annoying. Um, it looks like there's plenty of room in there, and there is, but it's an awkward shape, uh, so I found it easiest to kind of push it um, back first uh, and twist it as you go in. Um, oh, as some of you might have seen, I uh, ended up disconnecting a uh, stock ring terminal, um, which I've just attached back onto the car, just there, if you can see, and that's all fine. Uh, onto the amp, uh, the amplifier, this one, it's a KT, it's an Alpine KTP445U. It's a four channel amplifier with 45 watts per channel uh, and it's bridgeable to 90 watts uh, for two channels. Uh, if you're familiar with car audio, you might be wondering why this amp, it's a bit of a weird choice for a subwoofer. 
Uh, it's normally meant for kind of regular cabin speakers. Uh, there's a few good reasons for why this was a, a good choice. Um, so firstly, I guess the, the subwoofer, uh, it has two voice coils in it. Uh, each one uh, accepts 80 watts, so a total of 160 watts for the subwoofer. Uh, bridging this amp to two channels gives 90 watts per channel, so it's quite a good match uh, for power. Um, also, the amp has speaker level uh, turning on, uh, so there's no need to run a remote wire anywhere, a remote on wire. Uh, also, I've read on the internet that some bigger uh, mono amps can cause issues with the Tesla 12 volt system. Uh, this amp is known to work fine, so that's why I went with it. Um, you might also be wondering why I've only tapped the driver's side woofer uh, and not the passenger side as well. Uh, I did have some reservations about doing this, um, but I couldn't figure out a way to connect both right and left woofers uh, to this amp. Um, so I decided to just go with, uh, with the right hand side. Uh, I did some research and apparently uh, in music all the bass notes are recorded in mono anyway, so it shouldn't be a problem. Um, I've listened to a few tracks and so far so good. Um, so that's about it for the quick overview. Uh, obviously I need to uh, put things kind of back together, clean up the wiring and, and attach the trim back. Um, that shouldn't take too long. Uh, feel free to reach out if you have any questions uh, and I highly recommend uh, following Tony's instructions on his blog. Um, thanks everyone for watching.